the ring stand. I wake suddenly and stare in space in front of my eyes. Unable to focus immediately, I lie there and reflect on the reality of the dream. More vivid than usual. On holiday, as a child again in Felpham with my mother, we sit outside the converted railway carriage and listen as the seagulls whirl and scream overhead. We watch my father and my grandfather get their tackle sorted out for some night fishing. The sun sinks fast into the horizon and we laugh about her friends in the carriage next door and the two soldier boys who hang around in the vague hope that they might be able to get off with them. She puts her arms around me and hugs me so close that I can hardly breathe. The feeling of breathlessness wakes me up. Slowly, my eyesight sharpens, and as it does so, I feel that I am not alone. I'm in my mother's bed in her cottage. I've cleared out all her belongings ready for the sale of her house. She died over a year ago, and now that the probate has been dealt with, my brother and I can sell up and split the money. I turn my head slightly on the pillow and look over into the alcove next to Mum's dressing table. There, her white alabaster ring stand in the shape of a hand hovers in the air. I'm wide awake now and a tingle spreads up my spine and neck and under the skin of my scalp. I am startled but not frightened. Is there somebody there? I ask. The hand rocks gently back and forth as if to nod an assent. Is it you, Mum? The hand rocks again. I quiver with emotion. I've never had any belief in the afterlife or ghosts or anything supernatural. Is there anything I can do for you? The ring stand glides slowly in front of the closed curtains across to the other side of the room to an ancient pitch pine corner cabinet that I remember from our house in Croydon when I was a child 60 years ago. The hand raps on the cupboard door. I sit up in bed, swing my legs out from under the eider down put on my blue moccasin slippers and walk over to the cupboard. The hand moves to one side as I open the door. I look in on an empty space. I knew I had cleared it out earlier. The hand moves into the lower half of the cupboard and taps gently on the underside of the shelf. I stoop down and look, and there find a brown envelope with a cardboard back, and the words, handle with care, photographs, do not bend, printed in large red letters on the front of it. Someone has slipped it in between the shelf and the support. I 
carefully pull it out from the hiding place where I guess it has been for a long time. As I take it over to the windows and open the curtains, the ring stand follows me. I open the flap on the envelope and inside I find one black and white photograph. As I turn it over to look at the image, I hear a soft sigh and turn to see the ring stand. It moves slowly back to the dressing table where it settles down between my mum's French pink cardboard powder puff box and her Italian shell-covered jewellery case. I feel alone again and know that my mother's presence is no longer there. I look down at the picture and there I see my mum aged around 19. She stands facing a young man, their hands held out in front are gently clasped and they look into each other's eyes. I inspect the young man's features and feel a jolt of recognition. This is not my dad, not the man who brought me up. This person looks identical to me when I was a young man. I am overcome with agitated confusion. Who is this? I stare more carefully at the way they look at each other. Such a look of love passes between them. They both appear radiant. I have never seen my mother so happy, nor so beautiful. Never seen her so much in love. I turn the picture over and there is a few words scrawled in pencil. I'll read the following. Elsie James and her one true love, Richard Thomas, killed in action at the Battle of Kasserine Pass in North Africa in February 1943. She gave birth to me in October 1943. I move back to the bed and sit down stunned. A mixture of emotions swirls around inside me and as I look at this photograph again I cannot stop the tears that fall out of me. She never told me when she was alive and neither I nor my younger brother had any idea of this. Maybe she never confided with anyone else. Just another untold wartime story I suppose. It has given me something to do with the inheritance. I'm going to find out who he really was and whether I have any relatives out there. Thanks, Mum.